Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a quilt called Transitions. This is another strip quilt. It uses jelly rolls or strip sets, and it's a lot of fun to make, and the blocks are on point. We're going to use our strip tube ruler again. We made this quilt several years ago, maybe six years ago, and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the quilt we made. We've had a lot of people request, could you please cut transitions again? It's in really nice purple and greens, and we don't have these exact same fabrics, but we were able to cut a jelly roll that's really, really close. Now, the cool thing about this pattern is you've got blocks that are made of strips, and you've got the greens clumped in the middle, and you've got the purple surrounding it, and it's got accent fabrics in it. You can't really tell, but there's an accent fabric in every green block, this same fabric here and here, two accents. Then there's two other accents in the purpley blocks here and here. And the nice thing about putting those accent fabrics in is that when you sew your blocks together, these seams don't line up. So you don't have to match any of the corners. That's really, really fun. So here's the jelly roll we've got. We'll take it over to the workroom and we'll cut it open and I'll show you how to make the quilt. We're going to be making the throw size. So for that size, we're going to need a total of 36 strips. We're going to need 16 of one color and 20 of another color. The 16 strips are going to be in the center of the transitions here and the 20 are going to be in the blocks that are on the outside. So you need to have a 40 strip jelly roll and you need to have it with two colors. So we're using purple and green. If you had uh, green and brown or brown and gold, you want to have two distinct colors. This doesn't, it doesn't have transitions if you've only got one color. So pick one that's got a couple of colors in it. I'm going to separate the strips here into the two color groups. So let's open it up and see what we've got and put it in two different color piles. So let's see, we're going to do purples down here and greens up here. And I'm betting this is about half and half, but we'll count when we're done. And sometimes you have a strip where it's not clear, is it green or is it purple? And then you just have to decide. This one could go either green or purple. I think it looks better with the greens. So they're all separated now. We've got 20 greens and 20 purples. And the next step is to pick accent fabrics. We need two purple accents and two green accents. So we're gonna go back over to our bolts and pick some colors out. We need to pick out the accent fabrics for this quilt. So every block has two accent fabrics. So in the green blocks, this and this, it's used in every block. You can see it here and here. You can see it here and here. So these are both medium greens. We also have two purpley colored accents. So we've got a darker one here and a lighter one here. So these are in every single block. So we're gonna take our jelly roll strips over to our accent fabric area and see what we can find that matches well. So I've asked my husband, Matt, to help us because he's really good with the colors. Okay, I'm looking for a light purple and a dark purple today and a lighter green and a darker green. And my purple section. I like this as a darker one with these. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's one. My lighter, I have less selection. I do think this one though would be real good. It looks great with the one I picked for the darker one and, and because of that, it'll probably look great with the strips too of my fancy palette here. If, if you can see that, that, that looks very good. Let's go over to the green section. Find a couple. Okay, looking at these greens, it's, it's, it becomes very obvious if you just hold your fabrics up. This, this obviously goes super nice with that. Looks like the grass growing in Oregon around here this time of year. And for the light, That looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. I think I like this one a little better. I'm not sure why, but I just do. 
Well, that's that old lady. Yeah. Beautiful batiks. That, that green will go great in there. So that's it. That's it today. We've got these beautiful fabrics picked out. If you're wondering what happened to my nose today, I was riding my bike to get my wife and I lunch down at a local Mexican restaurant. My tires happened to slip, luckily right near some big bushes that were growing. I mean big, and I fell right into them face first. I had my helmet on, my sunglasses, but my nose got a little scratched. It was like falling into a mattress, luckily. So keep your helmets on when you ride your bikes. I have the fabrics that Matt picked out for the accent colors. So we've got the two greens here. We needed a quarter yard of each. And we've got the two purples, a third of a yard of each. They're all nicely ironed. And now we're ready to cut these into two inch strips. I'm going to be cutting all four of these at the same time. It's eight layers and I'm comfortable cutting eight layers, but you might not be. So cut the amount of layers that you feel comfortable with. I'm using my weight as an extra hand to help hold the ruler in place. And we're just going to get some two inch strips here. So the weight just helps keep that from shifting around. Okay, that's all the strips we need. So we needed four of each of the green ones and we needed five of all of the purples. Now we are going to put these with our strips that came from the strip set and we're gonna make some units, some strip units. I've pulled out two of these strips from the Jelly Roll. These are the two and a half inch strips this is the accent strip. We are going to sew these side by side into a long strip unit. Then we're gonna take two more of the green strips with the other accent green color and we're gonna make a unit out of this. And we're gonna keep doing that same process with all of the green strips. Here's my strips here, my two ones from the Jelly Roll and the accent and I'm just gonna sew them side by side. So this is a long straight seam you want to use a quarter inch seam and don't stretch them as you sew them on just lay them right on top of themselves and let the machine just feed them in so no stretching now we're going to finger press the seam to the side I always like to start up at the top. So make sure your seam allowances are facing this way. Open it up and just draw your fingernail across the seam. And I'm kind of opening it with my palms there. Again, you just want to press it flat with your fingernail. You don't want to stretch this as you do it because this is the crosswise grain. And it does have, these do have a little bit of give. But this just makes it much, much easier to iron later on if you just give it a quick finger press. Now we're going to sew the other two and a half inch strip on the other side of that two inch accent. We are also going to finger press this seam to the right. That one's done. Same thing with this set. And you don't need to worry too much about which strips you picked up and which accent they go next to because it's all going to make a really nice blend. I've got both of the strip units sewn and all of the seam allowances are all ironed in the same direction. We want to give them a light ironing and we want to make sure they're straight. So I like to have a long yardstick here so I can make sure that I'm ironing it straight. So it's possible to iron this with a little crookedness in it. And if you steam press it, it'll stay like that. So we want to line up and make sure that we've got it straight and not bowed at all. Then we're just going to give it a light pressing here. Double check the straightness again. Looks pretty good. Then we'll use a little steam. Same thing with the second piece. All right. Both pieces.
pieces are ironed and very straight. We are just going to take this one and put it right on top of this one. And the edges will line up because they're exactly the same width. Now, because I had all my seam allowances going the same way, when I flip this over, these seam allowances are now facing down and the back ones are facing up. So these are laying quite flat right on top of each other. We are going to sew both edges, then we're gonna take it to the cutting table and we are going to do a cut out of it. So it's nice to have these seam allowances going different ways because it'll make the cutting easier. Let's take it back to the machine and get that sewn. So my edges are nicely lined up here and I'm just gonna sew with a quarter inch all the way down. Again, not stretching anything. Now we're just going to flip it around and sew down the other side. So this is why it's important to have your quarter inch seams real consistent and your pieces cut very accurately because you want these laying right on top of themselves and you want them exactly the same width. So all those steps at the beginning, the ironing and the cutting it carefully and stitching it carefully, add up to making this step go really smooth. I'm going to take it back over to the ironing board and make sure that it's really flat before we cut it. So I'm just ironing those seams that we just did to make sure that we didn't get anything stretched or out of whack. And then we're going to check and make sure that it still looks nice and straight, which it does. We're going to take this to the cutting table and cut some squares out of it. I'm going to use my strip tube ruler to make these cuts here. You don't have to have a strip tube ruler. You do need a square that's at least eight and a half inches. And then you would measure down eight inches on each side and put a piece of masking tape or draw a line so that you have a diagonal here that's eight inches. It's just easier with this because the eight inch line is already on there. So we're going to take that eight inch line and we are going to put it on the stitching, not on the raw edge, on the stitching line. So we're going to line that right up on the stitching line, hold it down firmly, and then we're going to make a cut here. Now we're going to want to cut the other side. Now what I do, because I can't cut left handed, I will have another ruler handy and I'm still holding this side real firmly there. And then I will slide this ruler up next to it, hold it firmly and move that out of the way so the line is still correct and then I'll cut. So this is our first square. So you can see how nice those are going to turn out. Now we're going to cut another square. So we want to turn this around and again use the 8 inch line and put it on the stitching line. Now you're probably going to want to make a fresh cut here. Sometimes you can put it right on your previous cut and it will be straight. But it's better to just make a fresh cut every time. That way everything stays really, really accurate. So again, hold it down, put your second ruler right up next to it, and then slide that out of the way and then you can make a cut. So here's another square. So you'll see it looks similar, but the fabrics are in a different order. So we're going to keep cutting this. We're going to keep putting the ruler on here and cutting. So we're going to just cut, 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 cut. You'll get six squares from every strip unit like this. So for the whole quilt, we're going to continue to make two two and a half inch strips with an accent in the middle for all the greens. Then we're going to do the same thing with all the purples. And just a hint on picking your accent fabrics. For this quilt, you want accent fabrics that blend in. You don't want accent fabrics that pop out. This is one where you want a nice blend. So that's why I've got greens that go really well right in the same range of green and purples that are in the same range of purple here. Okay, I'm gonna finish all of the units and keep cutting. 
All of the strips have been sewn together. All of the blocks have been cut out of those strips. So the last step is just to iron these open. We've already ironed that seam, so we don't have to do that again. We just have to open it up and give it a little, little bit of steam. Now we've got a whole stack of purple blocks and a whole stack of green blocks. And we are going to lay them out and get ready to sew them into rows. But before we do that, we've got to cut our corner setting triangles. So I've got the fabric ironed and ready. So we're going to take it over to the cutting board and get that cut. Let me get these last two ironed here. Now that the blocks are all done, I'm auditioning the fabric that I'm going to use for the corner setting triangles. I thought I might use this fabric, but I really like to make the blocks and lay them on there and see if they do look good on it. So the purple ones are going to be up against this and the green ones are going to be in the middle. So remember this quilt has all of the blocks on point. So we need what's showing as brown here as a corner setting triangle. We're going to use the green. So here's another little better color diagram. These are going to be green in the middle and purple around here. And then these white triangles, that's what we're going to cut right now out of the green. So let me show you how to cut that. I need to cut some 13 inch squares. So let's get the strips cut first and then we'll cut that into squares. I'm going to use my weight to help hold my ruler down. I've got five squares that are 13 inches and we need to cut this along both diagonals to get our corner setting triangles. So I'm just going to put my ruler from corner to corner and I'm going to put the weight on to help hold it in place and I'm going to cut all five at once. Okay so that made a nice good cut. Now I'm going to put it back together and I'm just going to cut the other way. The reason we're using a large square and cutting it into quarters like this is because this will give us a straight grain on the long edge, which is what we, what we want around the outside of our quilt. All right, those are cut. The last thing we need is a few smaller triangles for all four of the corners of the quilt. So I need some seven inch triangles here. Now we have two squares that are seven inches and we're only going to cut those in half. These four pieces are going to go on all four corners of the quilt. Now we're ready to lay out all of the blocks and the triangles into the quilt. For the next step, you either need a design wall or, like me, you can use the design floor. I like to have a lot of space to spread things out. So I've got all my blocks, I've got my corners, and I've got my diagram, so I'm going to start laying everything out. Remember the accent colors we use in every block? They're these two right here. They're a little bit slimmer. And we've got a dark accent and a light accent. So I'm going to put the light accent over on the right in every block. Now for the green blocks, we've got again a dark and a light accent. And again, I'm going to put the light accent over on the right for every block. So you can see this one is not turned the right way. We want to turn that so that the light accent is going to the right and that will balance our quilt better. So this is going to take a little bit of turning, a little bit of playing around with the pieces. Once I get all the blocks laid out in the right position, then I'm going to check for color balance. If we end up with a whole bunch of one fabric in one area, I'm going to trade blocks around. Okay, I've got all the blocks laid out. I will probably do some trading around. But you can see it's starting to look like a quilt now. See, now we've got this whole long edge laid out here. And all you're going to do is fill in with these triangles all the way around. 
And these smaller triangles, they are what go in all four corners. So just keep laying these out until you've got them all over the, in every corner. Now you can see why I like to lay it out on the floor. I like to be able to stand back and get a good look at it. So I see a couple of issues already. This is the same block. Also, this is the same block, and I'm not gonna wanna have two that close. So all you have to do really is take this and trade it with something that's farther away. There, that's better. Great. Also, you know, same one here. Let's just take this one and trade it with this guy here. And I might do a little more trading around because you want to make sure everything is balanced and nothing, nothing is bothering you. But I love how the quilt is turning out so far. Really glad we're making it. To make a quilt where the blocks are on point, we're still going to sew rows and then we're going to sew rows together. So I've slid some of these rows back so you can see. So the first row just has this corner triangle. This is the next row. We're gonna sew this together, sew this onto it. Then we're gonna sew this row together and we're gonna sew this onto it. So I'm just going to pin it and sew it and then we're gonna lay it right back down here. So we're gonna sew these two pieces on first and then we're gonna sew this one on. So I just roughly pinned it. Now I'm going to line up the bottom corner and the side and we're going to have extra there. It's okay, we're gonna trim it off when we're all done. So use a quarter inch seam and just sew the triangle on. Now we're gonna to go to the other side same operation. Line it up at the corner here and sew down and don't worry if it's too long. It's supposed to be too long. Finger press to the side. This one to the right, that one to the left. And now this triangle is going to go on here. So this one has to be centered a little bit. So you've got a couple options. You can fold this in half, make a little mark there. Then you can fold this in half and make those marks meet up. That works really well. Quarter inch again. finger press to the outside. Now you'll notice we've got quite a bit of extra here. That's okay. When the quilt is all done, we're going to trim off with our rotary cutter. So this row is going to go back on the floor and then we're going to pin the next row. I've got the next row pinned together here and now we're going to sew these blocks together. The nice thing with sewing these blocks together is that the seams will not line up. They're gonna be off just a little bit. And that's good because we don't have to worry about matching anything. So let's start at this end. Again, line up your triangle at the bottom of the block and let all that excess just feed right above there and use a quarter inch seam. Still like to finger press as I go. I'm going to do that throughout the whole quilt. So we're going to sew these together. We don't have to match anything. We just have to make sure the top and bottom are even. So this step really goes quite fast. So we're going to keep ironing to the right here. See, none of the seams match up. They're not supposed to match up. That's why it goes so fast. Here's the row that we just sewed. 
it's always a good idea to lay it back down here and make sure you've got everything in the order that you want it in. You can see this one's going to fit right up next to it. So what I do is make all the rows, then I sew the rows together. So this one is going to go right on here. Every other row, you want to finger press to the opposite direction. So these are all finger pressed this way. For the next row, press them all the other way. That way, when you sew the rows together, they will be going in opposite directions and it makes it really easy to match your corners. So sew all your rows, sew your rows together, quilt's almost done. All the rows are put together now. The whole quilt top is put together and I ironed it. All of the grains are straight now, so it makes it real easy to iron this nice and flat. The next step is to trim off the extra of the green here so that we have a half inch beyond these points. So the easiest way is to get your clear ruler and to put the half inch line on the points and then we're going to trim off that extra. So we're going to do this all the way around the quilt. Then when we sew our border on, we're going to use a quarter inch seam. This point is going to float just a little bit, so we're always going to have a nice point and it's never going to get chopped off. Once you've got that trimmed all the way around, you're ready to put your borders on. So we're going to do a little lavender border and then a bigger green border and then we'll be all done. Now because we cut the corner setting triangles, out of a square on both diagonals. This is now a straight grain, so this is not biased. This is straight here. So it makes it real easy to sew the borders on. So I'm gonna take these over to the machine, get them stitched on, and then get this onto the quilting machine. I'm so happy with how the quilt turned out. It was just a joy to sew, and it came out really, really flat. So the blocks, you can see all the green ones in the middle, and then it transitions out to the purple ones on the outside. And here's those accent fabrics that we used, the dark green and the light green, and they're in every block. But you really don't see them at all unless it's pointed out to you. Same thing here. So those give it continuity, and they also make it so that you do not have to match any of these seams. That's really fun. So the blocks sewed together really fast. I put this little border on. I put the outside border on. Now the pattern called for a border that was about two inches wider. I finished the whole quilt and the border looked really too big. So I cut off a little bit of that. So that's something you always want to keep in mind. If you don't like how the borders look when you're done, you can cut them down. I quilted it in a pretty simple, large pattern, not very dense. I didn't want to fight with any of the patchwork. So it was really fun. It just took one jelly roll, a couple of accents, little border it takes about two and a half yards for the setting triangles and the borders and you're done now over to my other side here is the original one that we made several years ago i still like it just as well it's a little bit tamer the prints are a little bit lighter so with the newer version we used the really uh saturated prints but they both look really good so get a jelly roll make a transitions quilt and have a lot of fun thanks for watching